it's on? No. Oh, now it's, now it's not working. Maybe it's on now. <laughs> yeah, the number one was working. Yeah, I think that's when you started. Oh, okay. All right, let's go ahead and get started here. Grab your hymn book and stand. We're going we're gonna to sing number 295. 295, Jesus Loves Me, a good children's church uh, song here. But we'll get to sing all three verses. Hymn number 295, Jesus Loves Me. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for another day and, Lord, another opportunity to be here. I pray that you'd be with us now as we uh, continue singing praises to you. Help us, Lord, to think about these words as we sing them to you. And, Lord, help us to have that uh, joyful noise that your word tells us about. I pray that we would sing out for you. Lord, we pray for pastors who bring your word today. Uh, we pray that you would uh, give him the words to speak for us and help us to, to hear it and, Lord, use it in our lives. We'll thank you for it. We ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Remain standing. Hymn number 267. 267, look to the Lamb of God. Hymn number 267. <laughs> Seem long. 
pathway fall, look to the Lamb of God. In joy or sorrow, Christ is all in all, look to the Lamb of God. Look to the Lamb of God. Look to the Lamb. started I meant to make this announcement this morning but there are some magnetic stickers there on the back table and uh, they're there for you to look at and if you'd like to have something like that uh, I know some people don't like to have actual sticker stickers uh, sticker stickers those ones that stick to your bumper that aren't magnetic uh, some people don't like those some people like to be able to remove them if they need to but uh, they're the simple uh, stickers that go on the back of your vehicle that have scriptures on them and if you think about it, it's a great opportunity to witness to people. I mean, just if, if you have it on the back of your vehicle and uh, somebody pulls up next to you and it's got scripture right there. And uh, so you, you, that, that way it's the same as giving somebody a track without, without giving them a track. I mean, and it was like I was telling Brother Ed uh, tonight, you know, we never know what the outcome's going to be. If somebody had already planted the seed with somebody and that person gets behind you and reads that verse, you know, maybe that's a, a way of watering that seed. And so we're never going to know the impact. But we know this, the Word of God never comes back void. And so if you would like to have some, uh, or if there's different scriptures that you would like to have, I can get those for you. Just let me know, and I will order them, and it will be free. The church will pay for them, okay? Uh, but it's an opportunity just to be able to put the Word of God on the back of your car and go down the road. Now, I will tell you that sometimes uh, people will come up and get kind of angry with you if, uh, if they get offended, but I don't care. Amen? <laughs> yeah, it's the Word of God, and that's what we're supposed to do, and so if you're interested in that, just let me know. All right, Judges chapter 17. <clears throat> Judges chapter 17. Judges chapter 17. Judges chapter 17, look if you would, starting at verse 1. <clears throat> it says, And there was a man of Mount Ephraim whose name was Micah. Now that's not the same Micah uh, of the minor prophets. Different person. You'll, you'll see that in the passage, believe me. There was a man of Mount Ephraim whose name was Micah. And he said unto his mother, The eleven hundred shekels of silver that were taken from thee, about which thou cursest, and spakest of also, of also in mine ears, behold, the silver is with me, I took it. And his mother said, Blessed be thou of the Lord my son. And when he had restored the eleven hundred shekels of silver to his mother, his mother said, I had wholly dedicated the silver unto the Lord from my hand, from my hand for my son, to make a graven image and a molten image. Now therefore I will restore it unto thee. Yet he restored the money under his, unto his mother, and his mother took two hundred shekels of silver and gave them to the founder, who made thereof a graven image and a molten image, and they were in the house of Micah. And the man Micah had a house of gods, little g, and made a, an ephod and a teraphim, and consecrated one of his sons, who became his priest. In those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And there was a young man out of Bethlehem, Judah, of the, of the family of Judah, who was a Levite. And he sojourned there. And the man departed out of the city from Bethlehem, Judah, to sojourn where he, would find, where he could find a place. And he came to Mount Ephraim to the house of Micah as he journeyed. And Micah said unto him, Whence comest thou? And he said unto him, I am a Levite of Bethlehem, Judah. And I go to sojourn where, where I may find a place. And Micah said unto him, Dwell with me, and be unto me a, me a father and a priest. And I will give thee ten shekels of silver by the year, a suit, of, a suit of apparel, and thy victuals. So the Levite went in. And the Levite was content to dwell with the man, and the young man was unto him as one of his sons. And Micah consecrated the Levite, and the young man became his priest, and was in the house of Micah. And then said Micah, Now know I that the Lord will do me good, seeing I have a Levite 
to my priest. Let's pray. Father, again, we are thankful tonight, Lord, for those who have come tonight, Lord, to hear your word preached. And Lord, I pray that we will listen and heed the words uh, that we hear tonight, Lord, from you. And, and Lord, uh, I pray that you'll just speak to every heart in here tonight. And Lord, uh, I pray that you'll just bless those people that are here, Lord. And, uh, but more importantly, Lord, I just pray that, uh, that, Lord, we'll act on our convictions that you give us tonight, Lord. And uh, that we'll draw closer to you through your word. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, here in this chapter, and really uh, on into the next chapter, in chapter 18, we see really one of the wildest stories that you'll ever read in all of, all of the scriptures. It's a story of a, a, complete, a, a complete unscriptural chaos. You don't read a whole lot of right going on anywhere uh, in this chapter. Uh, in fact, if there was someone who was uh, doing something wrong in the sight of God, you pretty much see it all happening right here in Judges chapter 17. This story begins with a man by the name of Micah who had stolen 1,100 pieces of silver from his own mother. And we're told that when Micah's mother found out that the money was stolen or silver was stolen, she cursed, she stormed, she raged. And so young Micah decided to give the money back to his mother. And when he does, his mother says, Bless thou of the Lord my son. Now that's not the way my mother would have reacted, okay? But that's the way his mother reacted. She said, Blessed be thou the Lord my son. And so Micah gave the money or the silver back to his mother. Now that means there that, that Micah is somewhat of a thief. Uh, but I will say that his mother, if you continue reading this, was just as bad as Micah was because uh, when you keep on reading the passage, you're going to find out that uh, she was a thief also. She says to him about the silver, she said, I dedicated that unto the Lord. That's what she says. But then she turns right around, takes that silver and carries it to the silversmith who makes that silver into a graven image and a molten image. And, and so she put both of those images in Micah's house. And we're told that Micah had a house full of graven images and molten images. Now the second commandment clearly says, okay, in, in Exodus chapter 20 verse 4, it says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. I mean, that's pretty clear, isn't it? Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that in the earth beneath and that is in the water under the earth. And so we don't get very far into this chapter, and you see immediately that this family absolutely trashes the Ten Commandments. I mean, all the way through here. I mean, uh, they violated just about every one of them. Uh, have no other gods before me. They violated that one. Make no graven image. They violated that one. Honor your father and mother. He violated that one. Uh, there shall not, thou shalt bear no false witness. She, she broke that one. Thou shalt not steal. He broke that one. Uh, thou shalt not covet. They both broke that one. So you kind of see that things aren't going very well here in this family. You go right on down through there and you find out that they broke a lot of the commandments. And we're also told that Micah here made an ephod, which was part of the priest's attire. He made, he made an ephod. And then he made his own son his priest to start off with. Now well, the problem with that is, is Micah nor his son were, uh, they were, neither one were from the tribe of Levi. You couldn't be a priest according to that Bible, unless you were from the tribe of Levi. You couldn't do it. In fact, you had to be, to be a, a high priest, you had to be a descendant of Aaron. Okay? And neither one of them were from the order of Aaron. Um, and so a lot of things were going on here that were unscriptural and wrong at this point. And God's quick to tell you why things were going wrong and things were unscriptural. Because right there in the middle of it, he just stops and tells you in verse 6, in those days, there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. So he's saying, this right here happened, this right here happened, this right here happened. And then he says, these people are doing what's right in their eyes. Not in God's eyes, but in their eyes. And that's the problem. Okay? And then he continues to tell you what happens. And so really the authority of God was removed and the authority of human reason was put into its place. And everybody became at their own standard. In other words, what's right for, for me uh, is right for me, and what's right for you is right for you, uh, and there was no absolute standard. Uh, but then it gets worse. We're told then uh, that there was a young Levite named Jonathan who was traveling around looking for a place to live. Uh, we know his name is Jonathan by, the, by Judges chapter 18, verse 30. Uh, and there in Judges chapter 18, we also learned that he was the grandson of Moses. Now, a Levite was to be totally dedicated to God. That's what they were to do. Uh, the Lord was to be his inheritance. Uh, he had provision from God. He was supported by the tithes of the people. 
He also had a place to live, which would, would have been one of the 48 Levite cities. The Levite had a purpose, and that was to teach the word of God to the people and to minister in the tabernacle. That was the purpose of the Levite. And yet, you find this young Levite, instead of doing those things, you find him wandering around looking for a place to live and something to do. Obviously, he was not content with God's arrangements, so he decided he was going to make his own arrangements. And so Jonathan, the Levite, journeyed and ended up at Micah's house. And when Micah found out that this man was a Levite, he asked Jonathan to dwell with him and be his own personal priest. He offered to pay Jonathan money. He offered to give him a new suit of clothes and, and plenty to eat. Basically, he was offered him silver, a suit, and soup just to be his priest. And we're told that Jonathan the Levite agreed to this. And so Micah consecrated Jonathan, and Jonathan became his priest. And then in the very last verse, we see Micah saying this. Now know I that the Lord will do me good, seeing I have a Levite to my priest. Now, once you get into chapter 18, you read that a bunch of men from the tribe of Dan comes along, and they end up taking away Micah's priest, and along with all of his images, and basically leaves Micah with absolutely nothing. Okay? And those men from the tribe of Dan set up Micah's graven images, which, uh, which were made at the time that they're... Uh, that he made, and he's, they set them up in the house of God in Shiloh. Now, you say, well, that's, that's bad. No, that's worse than you think. Because the Bible warns about any tribe, any person, any family that would uh, get into idolatry. And you'll notice that by the time you get over in the book of Revelation, that the tribe of Dan is no longer mentioned there. Why? Because of what happened here. And so you find uh, that Dan gets into idolatry, and Micah was, was a part of that. He was a part of the reason for that. Now, when you read this story, honestly, you can't help but notice that Micah was a, re a religious man. I mean, if you think about it, think about he, he consecrates his own son to make him a priest, and then the Levite comes along, and the, then he makes him a priest, and then he says, I know the Lord's going to be pleased with me because I got my own priest. So, I mean, you can't deny the fact that he was somewhat of a religious man, but the problem was the religion that he had was not God's religion. It was a made-up religion. Now, certainly today, religion in our own, uh, of our own making is not unusual in the United States. Uh, many people uh, that profess to be Christian, they like to take a little bit from here and a little bit from there and a little bit from here. And it's almost like they have a, a buffet that they choose from and they, they choose the parts that they like and then they make that their religion. That's not the religion of the Bible. There are people today when it comes to what they believe about God, they'll, they'll pick this verse or that verse or this verse, and then they develop their own, their own uh, what, what they perceive God to be. But that's not the God of the Bible. There are people today that cannot handle that God is the person that said, go in there and wipe them all out. Men, women, children, and animals, wipe them all out. They can't handle that. There are people today that can't handle the fact that, that God will let somebody go to hell and will throw people in the lake of fire when their name's not written in the book of life. They can't handle that. What they can handle, though, is the God of love and the God of grace and the God of mercy, and there's no doubt he's all those things. But he is the God of the Bible. You've got to look at all of those attributes. You can't just cherry-pick the ones that you want. That's called making your own religion. And that's exactly what Micah has, has done here. He's made up his own religion. In other words, he's saying, oh, look, I'll just make my son a priest. And, oh, look, I've got a Levite now. Boy, God's really going to be pleased with that. But wait a second. What did God say about how all this was supposed to happen? How did God, what did God say about consecration? Uh, who was supposed to consecrate a priest? What did God say about where that priest was supposed to be and the job that that priest was supposed to do? And what did God say about, about graven images? You see... He, were, he was doing all these things, and the whole time he's thinking, God's going to be pleased with this because I've got religion. But it wasn't the religion of the Bible. It wasn't God's religion. And so in America today, you see that. You see a lot of people making up their own religion. And you know, and I've even heard people actually tell me that. I mean, I've, I've went and witnessed to people, and I've actually had people tell me, you know what, I've got my own way of worshiping. And you've got your way of worshiping, so don't, don't come preach to me. Well, if your way of worshiping is different than this Bible, then you've got a made-up religion. Amen? And so that's what you see that in America today, and certainly you saw that in the time of Micah. Now today, true, I don't think anybody actually 
you know, take silver and melt it into graven images? I, I, maybe they do. If you do, you need to knock that stuff off, okay? But, uh, but certainly, there are a lot of people who have a made-up religion uh, in this country. And the truth is, faith of our own making will never cut it when it comes to pleasing God. Never cut it when it comes to pleasing God. Now, there are people today who have, have man-made religion, but they have no idea that their religion is, is not the religion of the Bible. They've been deceived. And we need to make sure that we don't get deceived. So in this passage here, you see some, some telltale signs of what a made-up religion produces. In other words, how you could tell if something's a made-up religion compared to what the Bible says that it's supposed to be. And so one of the man, uh, one, one sign of a, of a, man, of a man-made or a, or a made-up religion is this. A man-made religion doesn't take sin seriously. A man-made religion does not take sin seriously. Notice if you would at verse 1. It says, There was a man of Mount Ephraim whose name was Micah, and he said unto his mother, Eleven hundred shekels of silver that were taken from thee, about which thou cursest and spakest also in mine ears. Behold, the silver is with me. I took it. And his mother said, Blessed be thou of the Lord my son. Now, when you read what happened here, it would be very easy for us to say that Micah had conviction about stealing the money from his mother, and so he, he made it right by giving the silver back to her. But if you read a little closer there, I think you'll notice that it seems like Micah was not under conviction by God to give the money back to her. Uh, he, he, gave, he gave the money back in order to calm her down. Because it suggests here that if you look back that, that she, was, uh, she cursed and spake also in mine ears, uh, he said, and that's when he said, okay, I took it. Uh, and that suggests that if his mother had not gotten upset about it, if his mother had not cursed about it and spake in his ears about it, that he probably would have never given it back. Now, when that's what you, when you, when you read, read it that way. Now, Micah, he, he, he probably would never get it back. He probably would never confess that he took it. He did not honor his mother to begin with when he stole the silver. I mean, certainly that, that was a problem. It doesn't seem like he was convicted by God to give the money back or the silver back. And the fact that he dishonored his mother and had stole the silver really didn't seem to bother him at all. What bothered Micah was the fact that his mom was upset. Now, Paul warns us about the wrong kind of sorrow in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. Here's what he says. He says, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. Now, that doesn't say that godly sorrow is repentance. It says, Godly sorrow worketh repentance unto salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. So in that passage there, it tells you that there are basically two types of sorrow. There is worldly sorrow, and then there is godly sorrow. You say, well, what's the difference between worldly sorrow and godly sorrow? Well, listen, if, if, if Micah here, he steals the money, and he starts to feel bad because his mom's upset. So then he, he, he takes the money and gives it back to her. That's worldly sorrow. Uh, if, if, if I take something and all of a sudden uh, people start to notice that I took it, then all of a sudden I give it back, why? I don't want to get caught. That's worldly sorrow. But godly sorrow is when you come to, to yourself and you say, I have sinned against God in what I did. Now that's godly sorrow, and that's what leads to repentance. When you start to understand what you did is just wrong, and you start to have a conviction, the Holy Spirit of God starts to convict you on the inside and tells you something's wrong, and then you repent of it, that's godly sorrow. But that's not worldly sorrow. Micah didn't have, uh, he did not have uh, godly sorrow. And uh, Micah uh, did not take his sin very seriously. His religion was one that, did not, that didn't stand uh, holy living. Now, God takes sin seriously, folks. He takes it seriously. Uh, God is a holy God. And any type of faith today that does not take sin seriously is not the true faith that the Bible speaks of. So the first sign of a man-made religion is a man-made religion does not take sin seriously. I'll give you a second sign of a man-made religion. And that is a man-made religion worships in spirit, but not in truth. It worships in, a man-made religion will worship in spirit, but not in truth. Look if you would at verse 3. It says, And when he had restored the 1,100 shekels of silver to his mother, his mother said, I had wholly dedicated the silver unto the Lord from my hand for my son to make a graven image and a molten image. Now, therefore, will I restore it unto thee. Yet he restored the money unto his mother, and his mother took 
200 shekels of silver and gave them to the founder who made thereof a graven image and a molten image, and they were in the house of Micah. And the man, Micah, had a house of gods. I had a whole house full of them. And made an ephod and teraphim. You say, what's a teraphim? A teraphim is basically uh, false gods, uh, false deities. That's what a teraphim is, or a teraphim is. And consecrated one of his sons who became a priest. So after Micah gave the silver back, Micah's mother basically told Micah, Micah, you know, I've dedicated this money to the Lord for you so that I can make a graven and molten image. And then after she told him this, she proceeded on with her plan, and she had the silver melted down into two images. Now, now I want you to get this. Uh, here are two people who are obviously interested in pleasing the Lord. She mentioned it. Later on, Micah mentions it when he says, now I know that, that, that the Lord will be good to me. So you got two people that are interested. They're very interested in, in pleasing God. But neither of them see anything wrong with making two images and adding them to a house that already was full of graven images. They didn't see anything wrong with that. They thought that God would be pleased with it. Even down in verse 12, when Micah consecrated the Levite, which he had no authority to do, and had his own personal priest, which was not God's way of doing things, he didn't see anything wrong with it. He thought God would be pleased with it. And he said, now I know, now know I that God will do me good, seeing I have a Levite to my priest. The problem was, uh, he was excited and enthused about his religion. He wanted, to, he wanted to please the Lord, or at least it seemed that way. Uh, but he was not excited about the truth. He was worshiping him in spirit, but not in truth. Now, Jesus said this in John 4, 24. He said, God is, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But there are a lot of professing Christians today who are just like Micah. They have it in their hearts to worship God, but they do not worship him according to truth. I'll tell you this, folks. I, 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 when I was a kid, when I was a, little, when I was a little kid, I was in a church like that. That they worshiped the Lord, and they, you know, they were very graceful people, but they did not worship the Lord in truth at all. There are, there are people that do that today. Uh, there's a man today that, uh, there, there are people today that want to worship God on, on man's terms. In other words, this is the way I'm going to worship God, and it doesn't really matter what the Bible says. No, it does matter what the Bible says. You've got to worship him, uh, worship him in truth. And you say, well, what's truth? Thy word is truth, what Jesus said. So in other words, you have to worship God according to what the Bible says. You have to do what God tells you to do in the Bible. You have to worship him according to the, what the scriptures say. Not what you think is going to please God, but what the Bible says is going to please God. But there are so many Christians today, they, 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 they want to worship the Lord. They think that they're worshiping the Lord. They think that God's pleased with what they're doing, but they're not doing it according to what the Bible says. And there are people today who call themselves Christians who will bow down before graven images and think that God approves of that. There are people right here in this town that will do that. They think they're pleasing God by doing that, but they're deceived because that's plain disobedience to God. When anybody gets the bows the knee before any graven image, there is no way in the world that God is pleased with that. Would you agree with that tonight? No way. But yet those people think that God is. Kind of reminds you of Micah. Now, not only does God tell us not to have any graven images, but we're certainly not to bow down to them. And just because you think that, what, that, that, that God will be pleased with something doesn't mean that he's going to be pleased with it. Just because you are pleased with something doesn't mean that God's going to be pleased with it. The things that pleases God are the things that the Bible says will please God. I remember uh, a, a while back, to give you an example, I remember there was a, a, a Christian one time, I challenged this Christian on, uh, about playing the lottery, okay, and uh, it isn't like I caught this Christian playing the lottery. Actually, this Christian came up and told me that they started playing the lottery. So I, I challenged them on it. And, and I mentioned to her that it was, it's a form of gambling. And, uh, and I explained that what the Bible has to say about gambling. And her response was this. She said, well, Pastor, if I win, just think about the tithe that I'll be able to give the church. And she was sincere. She was almost acting like she was doing it for God, but she wasn't. She, she honestly thought that the Lord would be pleased. Let me ask you something. Do you think the Lord would be pleased with that? That's called made-up religion, folks. 
when you start to do it, you're making up your own religion. When you start to determine what God's to be pleased with outside of what the Scriptures say, when the Scriptures say that God is displeased with something, and then you think that somehow He's going to be pleased when you do that, your religion is made up. Hey, listen, Micah should have known what the Scripture said. I mean, he, he at least knew enough that when a Levite came along, he said, hey, I, I, he's a priest. Maybe I can make him my priest. Now, I agree that that was wrong, but at least he had enough biblical knowledge to know that a Levite was supposed to do something uh, with the priests. At least he knew that much. I would say he probably understood the Ten Commandments well enough also to know that he was not supposed to have graven images. How is it that him and his mother are making these graven images and both of them somehow think that's going to please God? It's because they had made up man-made religion. Now, I understand that there are some things in the Bible that that are not specifically called a sin and some things that don't specifically go against biblical principles. And God has given us certain convictions over those things. He's given you convictions over them. He's given me, maybe he hasn't given me the convictions over it or vice versa. I understand that. And when it comes to those things, the only, the only time we should ever do those things is we can do them by faith and, and it could glorify God. I understand that. That's all in Romans chapter, uh, chapter 14. But when the Bible tells you that something is a sin and you do it anyway, and then you justify doing it by thinking somehow it's going to please God, you are not worshiping God according to truth. If you're going to please God, it has to be done in spirit and in truth. And so one sign that, that, that your religion is made up is that a man-made religion doesn't take sin seriously. Another sign that, that, uh, that something's a man-made religion is that a man-made religion worships in, worships in spirit and not in truth. And then the third thing, and that is a man-made religion focuses on the rituals, not righteousness. It focuses on, a, on the rituals, not righteousness. Look, if you would, starting at verse 10. It says, And Micah said unto him, Dwell with me, and, and be unto me a father and a priest. And I will give thee ten shekels of silver by the year, and a suit of apparel, and my victuals. So the Levite went in. And the Levite was content to dwell with the man, and the young man was unto him as one of his sons. And Micah consecrated the Levite, and the young man became his priest, and was in the house of Micah. Then said Micah, now know I that the Lord will do me good, seeing I have a Levite to my priest. Micah's concern was only having a priest. He was only concerned about the rituals being performed. He thought that the works that he did would make him accepted by the Lord. But God made it clear that he is not interested in works. He's interested in our hearts. And he always has been. Turn, if you would, over to Isaiah chapter 1, and I'll show you. All the way through, sometimes when we read the Old Testament, we think it's all about that God's interested in works. No, he's not. He never was interested in works. He's, he's interested in the hearts of the people. Now, if you don't believe that, then you just, I, I challenge you to read the, about the life of David. Do you realize that when David, when he committed what, uh, the adultery of Bathsheba and he had Uriah the Hittite killed, do you realize that there was no forgiveness for those things? That was an automatic be put to death for those things. But God gave him grace. You know why? Because he was a man after God's own heart. He got right. His heart was right. And so when you read in the Old Testament, it, it looks like God is, 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 is all about the works. But you're going to find here in Isaiah chapter 1, that's not true. He's, he's more interested in what your heart is than what your works. Now in Isaiah chapter 1, I want you to look starting at verse 2. It says this. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children. They have rebelled against me. Talking about the children of Israel. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib, but Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. That's, by the way, that's where you get backsliding from. Verse 5, why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt, revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. These people had a heart problem. These people had no love for the Lord. They had no fear of God. Their hearts were not right with God. And yet, they continued to offer sacrifices like they were supposed to. And they continued to do the rituals thinking 
just like Micah, that God would do them good. They thought God was pleased with it. Now drop down to verse 11, and we'll see really what God really thought about it. In verse 11 it says, To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of burnt offerings of rams and of the fat of fed, of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense and an abomina- is, is an abomination to me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I, can't, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feast, my soul hateth. They are trouble unto me. I, I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when ye make your many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil from your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. You know what he's saying? In that whole passage, he's saying this. You can do all the works that you want to. You can make all the sacrifices that you want to. But if your heart's not right with me, I'm not interested in them. That's what he's saying right there in Isaiah. And listen, folks, it's always been that way. It was that way in the Old Testament. Hey, it's that way tonight, too. Today, it's the same way. You could come and you could, you could work Sunday school in this church for the next 20 years. But if you're not doing it to the glory of God, God's not going to bless you with it. He's not going to bless you for that. You can come in and you can give your whole paycheck every month to the church for tithes. But guess what? If you're not a cheerful giver, God's not interested in it. It's your heart that he wants. It's always been your heart that he wants. Here's Micah over here, him and his mom, and, 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 and he comes over here and he sees this Levite priest and he says, Oh boy, I'm going to get this Levite priest. I'm going to consecrate him, make my own personal priest. I'm going to call him father. I'm going to call him priest. Oh, by the way, that just gives me the heebie-jeebies just calling him the father and a priest at the same time. But that's what he's going to do. And then he says, Boy, the Lord's going to be pleased with this. No, the Lord's not going to be pleased with that. Why? He's thinking it's all about the rituals. But it's not. It's about his heart. If his heart were right, you know what he'd have done? He'd have taken those molten images and those graven images and tossed them out. If his heart was right, he would have wanted to do it the way God wanted him to do it when it comes to this priest. But his heart was never right. Never was. Do you realize today that most of the major religions in the world today, if not all of them, do the same thing as Micah? They're all works-based. All of them are. There are people today who claim to be Christians that are counting on works to save them. There are people today who are counting on their priest and doing rituals, thinking that's going to make them accepted by the Lord and get them to heaven. But the Lord's not interested in those things. That's what man says that God is interested in, but that's not what the Bible said God, God is interested in. The Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Therefore, only faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and believing the gospel will get a man to heaven. You can't pray. You can, listen, folks, you can pray all the rosaries. You can do all the rituals. You can do all the good deeds. But without believing that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose again the third day, you'll die in your sins and you will burn in hell forever. Now, I'm, getting, I'm going to tell you something that a lot of folks may have a problem with. And that is this. Any religion... Any religion that relies on the works of man or promotes the participation in certain rituals like baptism or joining the church or doing communion to get somebody into heaven, that is a man-made religion. Any, any religion that says any works of yours, I don't care what it is, if they say any works of yours is required to get you to heaven, that is man-made because you don't find that in your Bible. Jesus made it very clear when he said he was the only way to heaven. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So if somebody comes up today and says, oh, I believe you've got to take communion and go to heaven. Oh, that's man-made. You didn't get that from the Bible. Some man taught you that. If somebody says, well, I think you've got to join the church. Some man told you that. You didn't get it from here. That's man-made. That's made up. You know how many people fall for that? 
Do you realize there are probably more people today that's counting on their works to get them to heaven than there are people who actually are counting on faith in Jesus Christ to get them to heaven? People are falling for it. Micah fell for it too. Levite priests right there too. I don't see that Levite priest tossing out those graven images either. I mean, it's easy to be hard on Micah, but the Levite priest here, he's just guilty. And so, you want to know what man-made religion is? It's something that relies on rituals, not righteousness. Hey, listen, if you want to know what the Bible says about, about what true religion is, listen, when it comes to what it's going to take to get you to heaven, it's trusting in, in, in Jesus Christ, trusting in his death that's going to get you there. has nothing to do with works. But there are, there are some people today that are trusting in works to get to heaven. I had something else here, too. There are believers today who sometimes think to themselves, if I do this or if I do that, I know the Lord will do me good. We start to think that way. We start to think that, you know, now I'm not going to sit there and tell you that if, you, if you're serving the Lord and you're serving him with the right heart, I do believe God will bless you for that. I do. But it's not going to make God love you more. It's not going to bring you more into favor. I mean, you're, you're his son. You're already in favor with the Lord. And, and I think that as Christians, we should serve him with the right heart. That's what we should do. We're servants, and we're going to be judged one day. We'll all, we'll all give an account of ourselves before, before the Lord, and we're going, to be served, we're, going to be, we're going to be judged on what type of servants we were. And to be a faithful servant, you've got to serve. That pretty much goes without saying. So we, we should serve. We should serve with the right heart. But don't ever get it in your head that if I do this or if I do that, it's going to make the Lord love me more. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. But that's the way Christians think. You see, we have this thing we're so caught up in works. Why is that? We, we think it's always about works, works, works. We'll sit here and say, no, it ain't about works. It's all about the Lord. But then we go out and we try to do things in our own strength. We go out and we try to make the Lord love us more by doing something for the Lord. Hey, listen, you do things for the Lord because you love him, not because you want him to love you more. He loved you so much he sent his son to die for you. He can't love you anymore. He loves you infinitely as his son. So you don't serve him to make you love him to, to make him love you. You serve him because you love him. That's what we've got to get, folks. But here, th these people had a made-up religion. They did not have the religion that the Bible speaks about. They didn't have, they weren't doing things the way the Bible said they're supposed to do it. In other words, they weren't interested in how God felt about it. They were comfortable with how they felt about it. And that's what men do. That's what, that's what people do. You know how many people today have their own ideas about who God is? And most people, the way they, they think about God is not the way that Bible describes him. Most people, when it comes about how to be a Christian, has nothing to do with what that Bible says what, is, what being a Christian is all about. And we all have, all of us have a tendency sometimes to make up a little bit here and there and say, I think the Lord will be pleased with this. I'm just going to tell you, if you want to know what the Lord's pleased with, he's pleased with you doing what he tells you to do and loving him according to what that scripture says and worshiping him in spirit and in truth. That's what the Lord is pleased with. That's what the Lord is pleased with. But that's not what Micah did. Again, when you read it, it's, it's this absolute unscriptural chaos because he's trying to do things to please the Lord. And everything he's doing, if you read according to the Bible, is displeasing the Lord, really. And so uh, we want to be able to say that now I know the Lord will do me good. And if we want, to know, we want to make sure that that's true, then whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do to the glory of God. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily unto the Lord is not, and not as unto men. If you really want the Lord to do you good, that's what you need to do. Is religion tonight, is your religion man-made or is it God-made? The way you feel about the Lord, is that the way the Bible describes him? You're, the way you worship the Lord, do you worship him in spirit and truth or do you just worship him the way you want to worship him? Is it according to the word of man or is it according to the word of God? What exactly are you counting on to save you tonight? If it's anybody or anything other than Lord Jesus Christ, you've been deceived by a man-made religion and you're lost. If you call upon him, he'll save you. If you put your trust in him and only him, he'll save you forever. And Christian, have you been deceived tonight by a man-made religion that says that what you do 
is what brings, makes the Lord love you more. Have you been deceived by that? Are you one of those Christians that like to cherry pick the parts of, the, of, of religion that you like and then live according to that? If you are, you're like probably the majority of the Christians today. A lot of Christians today, they think that they can, I've talked, how, how many of you ever talked to a Christian that says, you know what, I just don't think you need to go to church to be a Christian? Well, that's true. You don't have to need to be, you don't need to go to church to be a Christian, but the Bible does tell you to go to church. Amen? Now it does. Can't get past that. What are you going to do with that? People today, they, they say, well, what they'll say is this, is I don't really, I'd rather go, I'd rather go, well, you're not going to go out on a lake this time of year. It's a little bit cold. Amen? But people say, I'd, I'd like to go to the lake or I'd like to do this on my, on my one day off and, and I, don't, I don't want to go to church and I just don't think you need to. That's man-made. That's man-made religion. When somebody says, well, I just don't, I just don't see the need of reading my Bible. I mean, I, mean, I, I just go listen to preachers. It's kind of like uh, not reading a book, but go and watch the movie. <laughs> Let the preacher preach it to me. Well, that's great. You should, I mean, preaching's good. But the Bible does say, study to show thyself, under, uh, show thyself approved unto God, a workman needs not be ashamed, rightly divided in the word of truth. It says that, doesn't it? Listen, you just can't cherry pick the parts that you like. That's, not, that's man-made. You're making, if that's you tonight, you're making up your own religion. You say, then what religion am I supposed to be doing? What the Bible tells you to do. You know, pray without ceasing. Read your Bible. Go out and witness to people. That is the Great Commission. A lot of people like throwing that out too. Come to church. Draw close to the Lord. Stay in fellowship with Him. Confess your sins often. That's what the Bible says you're supposed to be doing. But so many people are just like Micah. Cherry pick this and cherry pick that. And then they sit back and say, Lord's going to be pleased with this one. No, He's not. If that's you tonight. You need to get right with God. If your religion is not according to truth, if you're not worshiping God according to truth, you need to get right tonight. Because I'm telling you, if you're not worshiping him according to what that Bible says, he's not pleased with it. He's not pleased with it. I think we all want to please God, don't we? So let's start worshiping him in truth as well. And get away from this man-made religion. Let's stand. Father, I thank you tonight, Lord, for this account here, Lord, in Judges chapter 17 that, Lord, shows us clearly that there are people that do all sorts of things. And, Lord, it seems like the intent was to please you, but they had no truth to it. And just about everything they did, Lord, was breaking commandments left and right. Lord, help us to understand, Lord, help us all to see that what we saw happen here in Judges 17, Lord, is not that uncommon in America today amongst Christians. So many people, Lord, are just making up their own religion without any thought whatsoever what the Bible has to say. And they're cherry-picking the parts of it that they like, and they're throwing away the parts that they don't like. And Father, I pray if there's anybody like that here tonight, Lord, I pray that they'll get right with you, Lord, and start seeking to serve you with, according to truth to please you according to the truth, and that our, heart, our hearts will be right before you tonight. I also pray, Lord, there's somebody here tonight that's not saved. Lord, help them to understand the truth, and that truth is that they are a sinner, and there are wages for those sins, and either they're going to pay for them in eternity in the lake of fire, or they can call upon the Lord Jesus Christ who died 2,000 years and paid for those sins and trust in him. And, Lord, we know that if they'll call upon the Lord Jesus Christ tonight, that they'll be saved. So I pray tonight, Lord, that you'll convict anybody here tonight that's not, not saved, Lord. Reprove them of sin, righteousness, and judgment, Lord, so they'll understand the truth and call upon you for salvation tonight. I pray you'll have your will and way during the invitation, Lord. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If the Lord spoke to you tonight, maybe you are, maybe you're guilty of, of, of making up parts of your religion. Making up your, Christian, your own Christian walk and what you think God will be pleased with. I want to challenge you tonight, if that's you, get right with God and start doing it His way, not your way. Do the things He wants you to do, not the things that you want to do that you think He'll be pleased with. 
If you're not saved here tonight, I'm going to ask that you get saved. You have the opportunity to be saved tonight, and you're not guaranteed you'll live another day. Take this opportunity to do the right thing. The Lord spoke to your heart tonight. Will you come? Is what you believe about your religion what the Bible says, or is it just what you want it to be? Are you making up your own religion as you go? Lord spoke to your heart tonight and you can come. Is God pleased with you and your Christian walk tonight? If he's not, you can you can talk to him tonight. saved tonight? Do you know you're going to heaven? Have you received Jesus Christ as your Savior? If you haven't, you must before you'll ever get to heaven. Without receiving him, you'll never have your sins forgiven. It doesn't matter how much works you've done, how many works you've done, it doesn't matter how many good works. Joining the church won't help. Only trusting in Him. All right. Be careful on the way home tonight. Um, and also take a look at those stickers on the back table, and if you would like to have any of those, uh, just to, like I said, they're magnetic, so they come right off. They don't scratch your paint or anything like that. If you're interested in something like that, let me know, and the church will order them for you, and it won't cost you anything. We want to make sure we get the Word of God out there so people can see it. And so if you're interested, let me know. Be careful on the roads tonight, and pray that it really does warm up this week. Amen. And again, hopefully everybody had a nice Valentine's Day. Hopefully you enjoyed some naps. Amen. All right, let's be dismissed in prayer. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, again for your word. And, and Lord, I just pray that we'll all heed the word, Lord, and, and see the examples that you give us, Lord, in the Old Testament, uh, Lord, and, and see how not to be. And Lord, help us, Lord, to glorify you every day. Help, us, help it to be in our heart, Lord, just to, just to please you, Lord, because we love you. And Lord, I pray that you'll take us home safely now, Lord. And bring us back to the next appointed time. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.